dudes what's happening it's Trent and today I want to give you a couple of quick tips about how to set up your canvas in sketchbook pro we're talking about uh, what resolution to use and how to set up uh, reference images in uh, its own layer so you can toggle it on and toggle it off so this should be your basic your standard setup uh, the first thing that you want to do is of course you know you can go in and edit the existing canvas um, by going to image size and uh, just changing it. Now there's a difference between doing image size and canvas size. If I do uh, image size, it changes the, the size of everything that I've already drawn. Uh, but if I do canvas size, it changes the backdrop. So it could actually crop out elements of your drawing. Now this should be your roughly your default resolution, 3360 by 2000. If it's not, this is a good range to work in. This is about what I usually usually do my paintings in. Although you can start at a smaller resolution and then scale it up if you want. I'm gonna give you a quick example of how the canvas scaling works. Let's say that I have a, uh, I'm just gonna do a doodle here, a dot, and then we're gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it. So let's say that I, uh, I've already painted that and then I go to adjust my canvas and I make it, let's say I use the starting point of the corner, which will be up here, and I do a percentage of 50%. Uh, width. See how it cut my canvas, it cut the image. However, there's a difference here between doing a uh, canvas size and an image size. Let's say that I do the same thing with the uh, uh, the image size and I cut this down to 50%. What's going to happen? It just makes the whole image a smaller resolution. So now if we look at our image size, you'll notice that my pixels have been completely cut in half. And so that should communicate a little bit of how that works. Now you can also uh, adjust the key proportions, which allows you to, if you wanted to skew it, let's really quick do that. Let's undo our resize, and then we'll go to image size, and then we'll unclick the key proportions and go to percentage, 50% width. It'll squeeze it vertically. So now my pixel width of my entire document and all the image within that gets squeezed. So that covers the basic canvas setup, but now let's say that we want to add in some reference imagery. Uh, currently I'm doing a cloud strife redesign. So I have a folder of uh, various reference images. Now you'd probably want to find these off of Google or somewhere and add them into a folder. And then you can go over here to this button right here, which is the add image button. That opens up a folder, navigate to your uh, folder with your reference imagery pull that up. Now it'll just drop it right in and it'll leave you with the transform tool with that image selected. So what you could do is start to organize these, add in multiple images that you may have. That one's kind of huge. Uh, line them up next to each other nicely. And let's do one more. Um, usually when you're doing uh, selecting which uh, imagery to use for reference, I usually pick one for colors and vibes, and then I pick one for the design of the character itself. If there's a specific piece that I'm working on, like for instance, um, if I'm designing as belt buckle or something like that, then I will pull up some reference for some belt buckles, and I will have them on their own layer. Now the nice thing about this is that You'll see that right now they're in their own layers, but I'm going to merge the visible, go down here to, oops, this button right here will allow you to merge visible. And uh, they are now on a singular layer that I can switch on, switch off, or drop the opacity if I wanted to, for instance, something that a lot of concept artists do is they'll have the geometry and then they'll trace over that geometry on a new layer above it. So when I turn that off, that's still there. This is really helpful if you're using photographs of a uh, model or if you're painting over a skin of something. A uh, very handy tool to have. Uh, also great for animation. This is going to be awful. Anyway, uh, so that about, <laughs> uh, that about summarizes the basics of layer management, uh, setting up your canvas and uh, selecting some reference imagery. Uh, from this, you, you have all the information you need to 
uh, design the character as you've seen him previously and you could color pick if you wanted to using the alt key of course and this is kind of how I get started with every painting that I do. I try to not pick more than three images because otherwise your brain becomes overwhelmed with too much information going on and you become a little bit scattered. Just pull what you need for that little piece. For you know, When you're starting out, you want three images that set up the color tone and get the character design down and communicate uh, the primary information that you need to start your design process. Later, you might need little reference images for watches or gloves or shoulder pads or something like that and uh, you can pull up you know a couple of separate reference images just for that based on what you need at that time uh, so that about covers this quick tip in sketchbook pro i hope this is useful some of these are pretty uh, beginner basic stuff and uh, i've gotten a really strong positive response to that so i've been doing more of those uh, i have some fancier more full uh, 12 hour paintings coming up uh, so you'll see those in the next couple of weeks as well. If you feel like this is uh, uh, really helpful and you'd like a lot more of my tips, I have entire box sets of tutorials that'll teach you some fundamentals of drawing and give you a lot of tips on how to get going, uh, a lot of the mindset, philosophy, and a lot of the technical knowledge that you would need to improve your drawing skills uh, in my box set of tutorials, which you can find a link to in the uh, text field below the video. All right, that does it for me on this video, and I will catch you all in the next one. All right, ciao.